She had her own talent. She had her own connection. She didn't really need him. What it is, what it ain't, it's your girl Umbrella, and I am back with another video now. And today's video is the first segment of... Hmm, the basis of this video is talking about women that get taken advantage of in Hollywood, whether it's them being a celebrity or they're messing with a celebrity. So this is going to be the first segment of Celebrities Take Advantage. In this video, we are going to be talking about Zola Taylor and Frankie Lyman. And I know you guys are going to love this video because you guys love all the Frankie Lyman videos that I've done thus far. I think it's only been maybe four videos that I did of Frankie Lyman, but those are probably my highest viewing videos. But I really wanted to talk more about the women in this particular case and how they got taken advantage of even further. Um, and it, um, not even just them, because I'm doing research for other videos and I really wanted to dive into this segment so that I could talk about all women that have gotten taken advantage of um, whether by a celebrity or because they were a celebrity it happened so often back in the day So I just wanted to talk about that um, So yeah, we're gonna dive deeper into Zola Taylor So if you're ready make sure you like you're following along make sure you comment below um, What your thoughts are um, if you've seen the movie why do fools fall in love comment below make sure that you watch the other Frankie Lyman videos as well and let's just jump right into the video Zola Taylor was not Frankie Lyman's first wife, but he she did meet him first because she was a celebrity herself. So that's why I wanted to start it off with her because she met him first. And I feel like that's very important. So they already had some sort of rapport and relationship. Zola Taylor was the member of the group, The Platters, and it was all men and she was the only woman singer in the group so she stood out of course she was very pretty very talented um the group was very famous so zola taylor and frankie lyman met in 1957 zola taylor was 17 and frankie was 13 y'all so that's crazy um if you've watched the previous videos of me talking about frankie lyman especially the first the very first biopic series that i did then you already know that when he was 13 that was the peak of his career. That's when he was making the most money. That's when he was touring the world with the teenagers. And that's when he was his most successful in his music career is when he was 13 years old. So now, you know, Zola Taylor met him. They would go on tour, her group, um, his group and other groups and um, or, you know, vocalists, singers like Chuck Berry. They all would tour and that's when they started, you know, messing around or whatever. You know, me, I wouldn't have been interested in no 13-year-old if I was 17, but that ain't none of my business, okay? So, moving forward, um, they saw each other here and there throughout their careers until it was 1965. That's when they, um, that's when she was living in California, and he was living in New York at the time. And he left New York and went to California to see her because his, I believe his career was, you know, on a downward spiral at that point in his life in 1965. Um, he had a previous relationship, which I will get into in the next video about Elizabeth Waters, but he was just get, getting out of that relationship and um, he moved to LA because he wanted some help with his career and he knew that she could help him with gigs and such which and such um, Zola Taylor could help him because she was still active in the industry at the time um, her her group was still going successful but I think around this time she was going solo doing her own thing so she still had connections and he needed some connections so around this time he was lip singing um, most of his lyrics because he was older at the time if he was 13 in 1957 then in 1965 he was 22 years old um just a couple of years actually um because he died when he was 25 so this was a couple of years before he died um 
which is very sad but back to the situation at hand Only enough he was lip singing some of his greatest hits because he was a child 13 years old at the time of his success he at once he left the group the teenagers his career um he did have solo songs which did very well but after those songs it's like you know his career just kind of dwindled and it was kind of non-existent and his voice had changed because of his drug addiction and just overall maturing as a man his voice had changed so he didn't sing the same way but he still had to lip sync um but he got the gigs you know what i'm saying frankie moved into her house after you know he started to get a couple gigs he moved into her house they started a relationship she was buying him clothes she was buying him suits and tuxedos saying that you know she didn't want him to look like he she didn't want him to wear jeans and she was dressed up to the nine looking good and he was just looking scruffy so she bought him clothes and she said that he didn't mind because he liked the finer things in life and these are all her you know from her mouth coming from the trial that's what she said in court so of course he didn't mind getting free clothes from her or her paying for anything because he liked the finer things in life or whatever i guess but um so she was buying him clothes he was staying rent free at her house and in between his gigs and um that she helped him get by the way he couldn't get no gigs on his own so she helped him get the gig she bought him the clothes into the relationship uh he actually called his his ex-girlfriend elizabeth waters and told her to come over zola taylor's house of course you know elizabeth waters was like you know he he told me that they wasn't together that they was just friends that it was just like a motherly relationship because she was older than him at the time and you know he did whatever he could to you know make the lie alive basically and um he got her to come over the house and it was this whole big thing and basically he was cheating on zola taylor um around you know maybe a year into their relationship he was cheating with his ex-girlfriend and moving her into his new girlfriend's house which is messy on top of that they actually got married soon after the cheating began which is really dumb but you know so they got married in in tijuana mexico it was all over the radio and everything everybody knew that they got married and they came back and they came back from mexico and um she was she had to go away soon to go to japan because she had to tour and she told him that he could stay in the house of course and that you know he could contact the lawyer when the bills needed to be paid and he could pay the bills or whatever while she was gone and soon after she left he started using that money for heroin and for alcohol and whatever else he was using at the time and he spent up all of her money so by the time she came back to her home in in los angeles that she paid for like paid you know it's paid she paying mortgage on her home you know it's her home uh when she gets back just like in the movie when she gets back to her home it's in foreclosure you know it's in really bad shape it's condemned like she had to break basically break a board um some wood open just to get in there and it was all gated up and everything so it was just a whole mess and and you know in me doing my research i found out that those events from the movie were actually true and i was horrified by that honestly um in the movie i was hoping that it wasn't true that he really did that and he took advantage of them actually being married her home was in foreclosure all her money was gone he left and she never seen him alive again and um the next thing she heard was that people like her his ex-girlfriend were saying that you know he was saying that the marriage was just a publicity stunt and he just wanted to be in the public eye again and 
he just wanted people to know who he was again or whatever the case may be and then you know that's the last time she's seen him alive and then years a couple of years later he ended up dead a year or two beyond their relationship he ended up being in the army because he was arrested for narcotics uh several times and you know he ended up being recruited in the army but um yeah and then that whole trial thing happened and whatever so their relationship was just a hot a hot mess but i'm pretty sure from you know watching the movie which you know isn't all the way accurate but a lot of what was in the movie was true but i'm sure that he loved her the most out of all the women i'm sure that he had a different type of love for her only because they shared a common passion for music and you can see that in the movie i feel like he probably shared things with her that the other women didn't understand because they weren't artists they didn't create music they weren't touring and performing and you know tempted to do drugs or whatever the case may be so a lot of people back then weren't innocent but i think the difference is, is that frankie lyman was an extreme womanizer and he took advantage of zola taylor and she had her own bag she had her own bag i think he latched on to that and he leashed on to her because he knew she had money he knew she had connections so if anything happened he kind of used her as a plan b and that is just very sadistic and you know I really wanted to talk about this too because I see um, as I'm getting older and you know becoming more of a woman each year each day each month um, I don't I want to analyze these situations so that it doesn't happen to me you know I don't want to get taken advantage of and you know partly is because I've been there you know I've been that type of woman that has wanted to take care of a man and you know help a man so much um and you know you do it stupidly almost like a fool you know why do fools fall in love it's like you're a fool and the way you hear the story it sounds really bad when you put yourself in in her shoes and you you reevaluate times when you thought you was in love and you thought you know you were manipulated by a man you know basically and a lot of the women that i'm going to cover in this have been wrongfully manipulated by a man especially zola taylor because he foreclosed her home um for a black woman to own her own home in a huge mansion on the hill of los angeles that's a huge accomplishment and i know that that house meant so much to her and the fact that um the fact that it was taken away from her is is really some bs um so yes um the story of zola taylor and uh frankie lima is just really crazy um I, I mean i don't know how i would feel because like you know just having feelings for someone and just feeling you know especially used beyond beyond you it's like drained you know you've been drained of uh your finances and your you know you've been drained emotionally because you thought that you had this you know genuine real connection and he just really used her like he really needed help with his career and little did he know you know she helps you get gigs but it's up to you to keep your career going it's your career it's not her career so you know she could only help but so much when it came to down to his career because he really just couldn't couldn't do it you know he on his own uh emotionally i feel like his career was weighing on him a lot and you know not to mention his drug addiction um i'm not one to make excuses for addicts just because it's like you're choosing to do the drugs so like you're choosing it you know it's not choosing you um we all you know are battling things in life and you know we we can't keep using things that are going to eventually kill us and kill our relationships with other people as an excuse you know to treat people awfully and use people and lie and steal 
and um, manipulate and that's really what happened um, I can't even say that I think she got something out of the relationship um, that was important enough for all the things that he took um, yeah I just I don't like that he he did that I thought it was horrible just to manipulate her like that especially because she had her own money and she had her own hustle going on and she was probably battling you know tempted to do being tempted to do drugs as well and just because she was in the industry around the same people and it's like I just I still feel like no matter what you go through as a person you shouldn't manipulate and treat other people badly um so that's going to conclude this video. Make sure that you like, comment below your thoughts on this topic. Do you think Zola Taylor got taken advantage of by Frankie Lyman? Um, do you think that she um, should have got some of the money from his estate? Because she didn't win the trial. So comment below your thoughts on everything that I was talking about in this video. Make sure you subscribe. Share this video with people that love topics like this as well make sure you comment below and i will see you in the next video bye